Okay, so I'm going to kick in with some practical, common sense objection right here. Okay, so if 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz are the are the frequencies that they found to be the most damaging, Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, so let's look at all those Wall Street brokers who jumped on those, we used to call them weapon phones when they Mm -hmm. first came out. That's right, yes. Um, And they've had those pressed against their head hours and hours a day, and it still takes them 10 years to develop a brain tumor. Then how, then, so this is what I'm hearing, and I gotta admit, in the back of my head, this is playing, okay, so if 10 years pressed right against the head, hours and hours a day, takes 10 years to develop a brain tumor, how worried do I need to be about Wi-Fi coming in from the neighbor's house, or my kids sitting in a school that has Wi-Fi? Like, if I'm, if I'm making sure that every other aspect of their life is healthy, what really, what is the risk? Okay, well, let me just correct you on one of the things you've just said. First of all, the studies that have been done looking at cell phones and brain tumors were not based on those early phones. Okay, they're based on the much more recent technology, so they're not based necessarily on the 900 megahertz, you know, 4-watt phones. Um, And the people that uh, found the studies that showed an increase in brain tumors and various types of tumors uh, on the same side of the head it was based on uh, individuals who had half an hour exposure per week or more. So we're not talking about hours and hours and hours a day. Right, right. They're the ones that develop the brain tumors. Now, for a brain tumor to develop the latency, the period between um, uh, you develop, you having cancerous cells in your brain and for those cancerous cells to grow large enough for us to be able to detect them or for, for doctors to be able to detect them takes about 20 to 30 years. So the fact that we're, we're finding them developing for people who use a cell phone within 10 years is, is very disturbing. And that's for adults, it's not for kids. One of the things uh, that a study was done looking at uh, tumors, and it was done by Professor Leonard Hardell in Sweden, who's one of the leading experts in this area globally. And he compared people who were under the age of 20 when they first started using them versus those who were over the age of 20. For those over the age of 20, the um, increased risk of developing various types of tumors was roughly um, twofold. Okay, so it's twice as many people develop them that should have developed them. For those who were under the age of 20, it was uh, fivefold higher. Wow. So these people are, and we know this, you know, children are much more sensitive to this radiation. Now we have eight-year-olds who have a cell phone. And, you know, I, I, I dread what is going to be coming out in the statistics uh, looking at pediatric brain tumors, and we, we're already documenting them, and the numbers are increasing. Despite what um, national statistics are saying, I found a, a report that said that there was actually um, misinformation that wasn't put into national statistics reporting these cases. Um, it was deliberately left out, or it was left out, whether it was deliberate or accidental, I don't know. But it was left out of the national statistics, so it doesn't look as though anything's increasing. But you talk to pediatric surgeons and around the world, and they will tell you they're seeing younger and younger people coming in with brain tumors, mm-hmm. and more of them. And this isn't, you know, just a handful of them around the world. It's, it's quite a few who are saying the same thing. So we're not comparing those old clunker phones that were very powerful with adults using them for hours each day. That's not the comparison. We're comparing uh, people, adults, who are using the normal type of technology we have have had over the last 10 years, and they're exposed to them at least a half an hour. That's how, that's how some of these studies were done, at least a half an hour a week. That's nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's our background now. That's for people who aren't exposed. Um, so, yeah, exactly. So it's not a fair comparison uh, in that regard. We know that children are very sensitive. And once again, what the research is showing that you can have, um, you can compare the effects of uh, short-term high exposure to um, long-term low exposure, and you get the same results. So having children sitting in a classroom for six hours a day using their computer for a part of that time means that their bodies, you know, constantly exposed 
and, and it varies somewhat, you know, with intensity, depending on how many kids in the class are using it, to microwave radiation. These same kids then go home, and they have wireless routers in the home, and so they're exposed to that radiation. Most people will not turn their wireless routers off at nighttime, so they're exposed in the middle of the night. Their little bodies don't get out of this radiation at all. They're constantly exposed. They have no ability to repair the damage that this radiation is doing, and so they become ill. And the illness is not necessarily a cancer. It's a headache. It's feeling achy. It's not getting a good night's sleep. It's being exhausted. It's not being able to concentrate in school. And then some percentage of these kids are developing heart arrhythmia and heart palpitations because your heart is an electromagnetic organ. We know it affects the brain cells, um, your ability to think, the brain wave activity in, in children. And the effects last well after the exposure stops. But for these kids, the exposure never stops. They're just right. constantly exposed. It's, that's what you've raised is what I find a very interesting point because the common perception is, look, if this radiation was so damaging, more people would be affected. But look around, everybody's fine. And then you say, well, here's, here's what you actually need to look for, mm-hmm. right? And you, you start going through the list and nobody's connecting the dots between the, the worsening health of their children and of themselves. Like they're saying, oh, you know, my hormones are unbalanced and, um, my, you know, I just, I need to take more and more supplements to, you know, not feel so, I'm really fatigued. Nobody's connecting the dots between, well, you know, why are you, why are we having all of these, you know, quote, small symptoms ongoing all the time? Why is nobody saying, no, I'm, I'm really healthy. I feel really good every day. That's right. And actually, if you look at the amount of medication that's sold, a lot of the medication is sold for depression, which is one of the symptoms, uh, yeah. for um, insomnia, which is one of the symptoms, and for pain, which is one of the symptoms. And, you know, we've done studies in schools, and we think that probably a third of the population is affected by this form of energy, and they're just chronically ill, or they're just not really healthy. They're not very vibrant. And many of these people Absolutely. will tell you, well... I'm, I lead a stressful lifestyle, that's why I feel this way, or I'm getting old, that's why I feel this way. But they go away somewhere into a clean environment. And I'm not talking necessarily about going on a vacation and, you know, not having any work to do because that's not a fair comparison. But they go into a clean environment. They visit a friend, they stay for a weekend or something, and they sleep well. And, you know, they wake up and they're not tired in the morning. And, and funny enough, their lower back doesn't hurt for some reason. And a lot of this can be attributed to their exposure to electromagnetic energy in their normal environment. 